Hi and welcome to Tech Nation TV. My name is Rusty G and this is episode number 27 and as you can tell I'm a little alone. Uh, Alan couldn't make this week. He got the birdie pig swine flu something or other but either way he wasn't feeling good. So I went ahead and I had a lot of news to talk about so we're going to talk about it. So for the first story what I want to talk about is the NFL, and that's right, the Super Bowl. For those of you, the Giants or whatever, I don't know. I don't even know who played because I didn't watch. But either way, Super Bowl 45 or 46 or whatever it is, 2.1 million people watched it online through the internet or through the Verizon app or through whatever the NFL official app was. 2.1 million. That's almost as many people that watched it live on television, either through their cable or satellite provider or over the air, uh, whichever you choose. But that's a lot of people. It's got to tell you something, NFL. People love streaming. That is awesome. The other thing that was really cool was Twitter hit like this outrageous number. I want to say it was like 12,000 tweets per minute about the Super Bowl. And it got even crazier when Madonna got on stage. I didn't watch the halftime show. I missed all the commercials except for I kind of went back on Hulu and watched them and on my Xbox. But that's neither here nor there. But basically, Twitter just exploded and with the most tweets that it's had per second or per minute or something like that. I'll have the information up here in front of you as I was talking about it. But that's crazy. People love to talk about stuff on the internet. That is awesome. NFL, congratulations. Whatever team won, awesome. Whatever team didn't, good for the kids in Africa. They're getting new shirts or new clothes. Either way. Speaking of other things that are successful, it looks like the iPad 3 may be right around the corner and on the horizon. That's right. iPad 3, according to All Things D, is going to be announced hopefully the first week in March. And as Apple has done historically, uh, usually a week or so later, even a month later, uh, they will be releasing iPad 3 hardware to the public. So uh, start gearing up and get your iPad 3 uh, rumor news. Get it out and start checking the list because there's a lot of them out there double the screen, there's something about a sharp screen, they're going to be the provider of the screen, the camera is supposed to move, the case is supposed to be thicker or something, it's supposed to be quad core, then it's not supposed to be quad core, then it's, I don't even know what all the rumors are, it's, it's ridiculous, but I'll just sit and watch the announcement and just see what all comes out, and if you just bought your iPad 2, uh, time to take it back, it's time for an iPad 3. That's right. But what kind of sucks though about the fact that they're about to announce this iPad 3 is they just announced the iBooks 2 and the whole education thing and replacing textbooks. The thing that sucks about this, and I wrote about an, art, an article about this on my personal blog, but this is just a thought. What about schools that are going to buy into the iPad and doing digital books? If you're updating every single year like you have been, it's going to be kind of rough on them because I could see, uh, like I said in my blog, something along the lines of, you're on iPad 7 and their school district's still on iPad 2 because you guys update every single year. But either way, just, you know, for those of you that are ready for it, iPad 3 should be coming out hopefully by the end of March. We'll see. And for other companies still running things very successfully, Google, who I actually call Skynet sometimes because they pretty much own everything that I do. Gmail, Reader, Google Docs, my searches, they pretty much know everything that I look for. So. But anyway, Google is looking to get into the home entertainment system. That's right, the home entertainment system. Google Android unit is to be rumored to be developing a wireless home entertainment system that is capable of streaming music throughout the home. That is awesome. Can you imagine Google taking over your 5.1? Now, not only do they know what you search on the internet, but now they know what kind of music you listen to. I mean, mine's mostly Breaking Benjamin, Chevelle, uh, some Arlo Guthrie. Look that up. 1960-something. But anyway, uh, yeah, so Google TV, maybe that was just the start. Now they're going to bring it over to the home entertainment system. Awesome. Another thing that Google was talking about, though, is Google is actually around the corner fixing to release an official G Drive. That's right, storage in the cloud. We've heard enough of the cloud, and I even have my own cloud through Pogo Plug. But either way, for those of you that know anything about Google and some Google hacks, you've actually been able to do this for years through I think a plugin called G Drive for Firefox and I'm sure they've had it for Chrome and they've had it for Safari and maybe Internet Explorer, I, I doubt Internet Explorer. But you've been able to you know access files because it's stored into your Gmail server as an email or something along those lines or an attachment or something. I'd, I don't know how the, all the back end work but it's been around for years, there's been workarounds but now it's going to be official 
and it looks like you'll be able to share your documents, your calendars, pretty much everything that you do in Google, especially with the whole privacy thing that they just went through about letting you know that, oh, when you sign up for Google+, Plus, we pretty much tell YouTube, Google, uh, every other thing that we own, <laughs> that, you know, we're going to put you into that network and we don't care about your privacy, but either way. Uh, yeah, so the official Google Drive around the corner, we'll see what happens. Another Google thing I'd like to talk about, though, is get this. Google is looking to pay you, that's right, pay you $25. And that would be great because right now, um, yeah, my wallet's a little empty. Uh, but, but either way, uh, 25 bucks. And get this, though, it's not in a lump sum. And I know $25 doesn't sound like a lot. But basically what they're doing is if you allow them to see your Internet, and I'll tell you here in a second how they're going to do it, uh, for over a year period, 12 months, they will give you $25 in $5 increments in $5 Amazon gift cards, I think is how it goes. And so for you know every fifth section of the year, they'll divvy it out and give you a $5 Amazon card. Is it worth it? I don't know. But listen to the hardware that they give you. It looks like they're partnering up with Cisco to give you, it, it's through, it's a thing called ScreenWise Panel, but they're gonna be partnering with Cisco to give you this nice little router. Yeah, this little thing, awesome. I want one and I kind of want to sign up for one but the problem was they started this past Tuesday and if you weren't paying attention and you missed it I think they're pretty much overwhelmed because that's what it says on their website they were overwhelmed with requests kind of sucks but you know I'm gonna keep checking the website see if I can get one because I really like the router even though I have a really nice router already I, I just kind of want another one just because it's free so who can pass up free Google's been giving it to me for years so either way Moving on to the other company that is very successful in what they do, Microsoft. Get this. Microsoft is to launch a consumer preview of Windows 8 coming up in Barcelona in February. February 29th to be exact. I think that's during the uh, Barcelona, whatever that's going on out there, the Mobile World Congress. So check it out. Make sure you follow all the in-gadgets, all the gadgets, all the... I want to say, uh, I can't remember all the websites from Ars Technica. Follow your favorite website, and I'm sure they're going to have news about it coming up for Mobile World Congress. And I think I'll download it just because I already have the Windows Live 8 beta, I think is what I have. Uh, and I haven't even tested it yet, and I really need to because I hear it's got the Metro UI style with the big, huge buttons. And uh, I, from what I hear, it's supposed to be really awesome. I don't know. I love my Windows 7. I've had it since the you know day it came out. I got a free copy. I bought another copy. I keep getting free copies from different places. Every time I get a new laptop, like this one or a new you know something, I've got Windows 7. I love Windows 7. But uh, I'll have to look into Windows 8. We'll see what happens with that. Make sure you check it out. Mobile World Congress 2012. On the other end of things, though, not Microsoft, Apple. Um, back to Apple, I should say. Uh, former CEO Steve Jobs. R.I.P. Or I don't think that means our... I, I don't know, but you, you get the point. Uh, his apparent FBI background document has now been released. Get this. It's 191 pages. 191 pages of a background document? And what in the world? Apparently, he was going to be, you know, taken up by the president for a job at the White House. Wow. That's awesome, except for the fact that it was George Bush, so I'm kind of worried that, you know, what he would have been doing, maybe he would have made George smarter. I don't know. I hope that he would have. But either way, you can check it out. I think it's on documentcloud.com, but all the news websites, CNET, Ars Technica, Apple Insider, All Things D, Wall Street Journal, Design, I could go on and on. They've all got a link to it. It was one of the biggest stories today. So check it out. Look for the 191-page background FBI file that has now been released. Make sure you download it because they could pull it away and I'm make, I'm pretty sure the government's got the rights to let that go and the family can't say much but either way go check it out see if you find anything interesting we'll see. Moving on from successful companies though into not so much as of recent successful companies Blackberry, Rim, that's right all those CEOs that left things aren't starting to look so good so what they've got to do is try to bring some word back up. So what they're going to do is, if you're an Android developer, listen up. If you have an app on the Android marketplace right now, and you want to port it over to the BlackBerry app world, RIM will give you a BlackBerry playbook for free, just for porting it over. 
And that's pretty good because it's a 16 gig, you know, will the thing work in a year? Will they support it in a year? Will it be around in a year? We don't know. But hey, it's a free tablet, so why not try it out? You've got until February 13th, which is the deadline. So by the time you're watching this, I hope that you catch up. And if you're an Android developer, go write an app for the playbook and then get a free playbook, which I'm assuming it's kind of like a developer's thing anyway. They need to have one to test it on and make sure everything works and all the, you know, whatever it is that playbook does. I'm sure it does the same things that the iPad does and the Zoom does and the Zoom 2 and all those up other tablets and the Kindle Fire and things like that. But either way, go check it out. If you're an Android developer, go get you a free one. And if you get a free one and you get bored with it, I'll be more than glad to take it off your hands. Uh, but I'm not really willing to pay for it. So. Anyway, moving on. Unfortunately, other companies that have been successful for hundreds of years, ask your parents and your grandparents. I'm sure they've never heard of this place. Kodak. That's right. Kodak is starting to slim things down. And unfortunately, they're going to stop making digital cameras, camcorders, and digital picture frames. Which is a whole other thing with me because I hate digital picture frames and the only people allowed to have digital picture frames are grandmothers. So if you're a grandmother, you're the only person allowed to have one. Nobody else. If I see one in your house, I'm taking it down and I'm breaking it in half. Ah, digital picture frames need to die. But either way, back to Kodak. Yeah, they're going to be getting rid of, starting in the middle of this year, it looks like they're just going to stop pretty much all of their digital cameras and camcorders. Kind of sucks uh, that they're slimming down, but it looks like they're starting to, you know, this is the first steps to start and to sell things off and make the company smaller. Maybe they might, you know, not go completely out because I know they just got through filing for bankruptcy. Maybe they might, you know, maybe they might make it out of it in 25 years, come back and Kodak comes out with the craziest thing. We don't know. But best of luck to all those people that work at Kodak because unfortunately I know that with times like these, jobs start getting lost, so anybody that works at Kodak and you're fixing to get uh, the can, ugh, sorry, just hope that the unemployment works for you. It didn't work for me, but mm, either way. And for those of you that play the Portal game and know anything about Portal, Portal 1 or 2, I only know one because I got it free with the purchase of another game, or I think they were giving it away or something along those lines, but I know a little bit about it, For so for those of you that play the Portal game, get this. Coming up in April, it looks like you will be able to get a life-size replica of the Portal Gun. It's being made by a company called National Entertainment Collectibles Association, NECA, which has also been famous for making other movie games, I mean video game and movie props, such like Bioshock, Eve Hypo, The Syringe, Sweeney Todd's Razor Blade, so on and so forth. So they know what they're doing, and it's going to look good. The only thing is, it's going to be in Japan, so it's going to be like 16,000 yen, which translates to roughly about 208 U.S. American dollars. Is it that cool? Maybe if I got, I don't know, the aperture suit and the, I don't know, the laboratory coat or the orange jumpsuit or whatever, and then got the gun and then went out for Halloween or for a Comic-Con or whatever con. Uh, maybe but I, I don't know I just it's it's two hundred and eight dollars but I mean it's gonna be really cool it'll have the orange and blue light flash it'll have you know the little, it'll have everything it'll be exactly like what's in the game so be sure that by April May start looking for it see if you can find it if you want you can send me one for Christmas because I'll be more than glad to take one for free but anyway, that's it. That's all I want to talk about this week for episode number 27 of Text Nation TV. Make sure you can follow us online. Textnation.tv is the main website. You can see everything there. You can follow us on Facebook. Friend us up, like, or I think it's like our page on Facebook. I can't remember all these things, but like us up on Facebook.com slash TV. You can find us there. I actually use that for also news. You can follow some of the latest news as well. You can follow us on youtube.com slash TV. Make sure you subscribe there, like the video, share it with your friends, embed it. I don't care if it's on another website. Embed it. Do what you want with it. Just spread the word. Also, you can follow us on Twitter if you're a Twitter person and you tweet a lot at TextNationTV or twitter.com slash TV. however you want to look at it. You can follow our tweets there as well. We tweet pretty much about the news and what's going on with us and any of the tech news. We can be your source for tech news if you would like just follow us online and then the last place that you're going to find us is google plus that's right you can actually search for us on google plus it's text nation tv all one word uh unfortunately google plus doesn't have like a plus dot google slash text nation tv it's whatever the profile and then slash and then something else it's crazy i know 
I wish they would fix that. I might put a bit.ly link up right here if you see that. But either way, I think I got them all. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Text Nation, and now Google+. Plus. So I think that covers everything. Uh, make sure just subscribe, follow, like, whatever they do. Add us to your circles. Uh, we might even set up a cool hangout or something like that, but we'll see in the near future. Hopefully next week, Alan will be back and he will not have the piggy swine flu and pass it off to me because I've already been sick once this year and it's only uh, February the 9th. So either way, but we'll see you again. Make sure you follow us online. Thanks for watching.